Hello, my name is Heath Caldwell. I am a senior at Helena High School from Clancy, Montana in the United States. In my project, I was interested in comparing the reliability of the cellular structure of two different bones for age determination in female Rocky Mountain elk. Typically, scientists will sample a tooth to determine the age of an elk, but I wanted to see if certain bones could be used to accomplish this goal. To do this, I counted the number of lines of arrested growth present in different bones. Lines of arrested growth are rings that form a growing bone similar to the way tree rings are formed. Unlike tree rings, however, lines of arrested growth can be destroyed by growing bone and vary in number between bones from the same individual. I collected the femur, tibia, and first incisor from six female Rocky Mountain elk. The teeth were shipped to a lab to determine the actual age of each individual, while samples of the femur and tibia were processed into thin sections so I could analyze their cellular structure. I counted the number of lines of arrested growth present in each bone to determine if the femur or tibia was more reliable for age dating female Rocky Mountain elk. I found that the youngest individuals in the data set usually had the same number of lines of arrested growth in their femur and tibia. While in the oldest individuals, there were more lines of arrested growth in the femur than the tibia. As can be seen here, a nine-year-old elk has five lines of arrested growth in its femur and only three lines of arrested growth in its tibia. Additionally, there was no correlation between the dimensions of the bones and the age of the individual. All of this information shows that counting the number of lines of arrested growth in the femur is more reliable than the tibia for establishing a more precise minimum age for female Rocky Mountain elk. This project has also shown that dimensions of the bones is not always a good indicator for age of an individual.